Hey folks, this is Chad at Epsona. Today, we are going to talk about installing Epsona into your Salesforce instance. To confirm whether you have Epsona installed, if you're not sure, the best place to start is in Setup. Once you get to Setup, go to Installed Packages. We can see there's no installed packages here. As you may know, Epsona is a suite of tools. Epsona for Salesforce is our base package, but we have many other tools that you can install. You can get to the App Exchange listing for any of our tools from our homepage. Today, we're going to install the base package, Epsona for Salesforce. So now what we're going to do is go to the App Exchange. You'll want to make sure that you log into the App Exchange with your production user, even if you're installing in a sandbox. Click the Get It Now button. Here's where you can choose whether you're installing into production or a sandbox. Today, it will be production, but we'll cover some sandbox details at the end. Click Confirm and Install. This is not the final step. You still will be prompted to log into your environment. Here's where you choose which environment you'll be installing Epsona into. At this point, you'll choose whether you install Epsona only for admins or all users or for a certain subset of profiles. It's generally safe to install Epsona for all users because Epsona controls access to its tools through license management. By installing for all users, Epsona will set all of the right settings on all of the profiles so that once you give access through license management, the user will have access to all of the right things. You're welcome to install only for admins if you want to test things out first, but you may have to manually change some of the settings in profiles or permission sets so that other users can see Epsona. I'll cover a little bit more of this in detail later. Today, we're going to install for all users. Great, now we can see that Epsona for Salesforce is in our installed packages list. Let's go to Manage Licenses. Here is where you'll choose which users get access to Epsona. I can see that I have three licenses available, and I'm currently using one of those licenses. You can add or remove users just as you would for any other app. You should be able to find Epsona as a tab once you've installed. The first time Epsona loads, it will create a cache in your browser, so it may take a little longer. Congratulations, you've installed Epsona. Check out our license assignment playlist on YouTube for more details about assigning licenses to your users. And if you're ready to learn how to use the Epsona tools, check out our Quick Start playlist, where we provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to use each of our tools. We'll be regularly adding content to this playlist, so make sure to subscribe to our channel to receive notifications. You're welcome to stop the video or continue to listen as I describe further how to configure Epsona for your users. Epsona is accessed through a single tab in your Salesforce instance. Almost all of Epsona's tools can be accessed from within this tab. You may be familiar with Salesforce's structure that controls access to objects and fields. Profiles and permission sets set the foundation of user access. Organization-wide defaults, role hierarchy, sharing rules, and manual sharing open up access to objects for users. What's important to know about Epsona is that Epsona will never give more access than Salesforce does. In Epsona, Access is controlled through configurations. It's important to have one Epsona configuration per user profile for any users accessing Epsona. It's important to add custom objects to these configurations so that users get access to the right objects. And as mentioned, Salesforce permissions are always respected. For more information about Epsona setup, this link will be in the description. So let's take a look at Epsona configurations. Go to Settings, Configurations. You will always be given a default configuration and a configuration for the installing user. Whatever Epsona configuration has a star is the one that's assigned to your user. Let's click on our configuration and clone it as if we're going to assign it to a different profile. Configurations in Epsona are similar to what profiles or permission sets are to Salesforce. Here we'll choose which profile we're going to assign this configuration to. You can also control the edit access for the users using this configuration. On the left, you'll see all of the objects in Salesforce, both standard and custom, and you can move any of them to the right so that they're visible in this configuration. It's almost certain that you'll need to take a one-time effort to find all of your important custom and manage package objects and add them to your configurations. Once you've set your object access, click Next. Here you can decide to restrict access at a field level per object. Lastly, you can decide which objects show up on the menu bar in Epsona. Any objects you add to this list will show up along the top of your menu bar. All of the rest of the visible objects will be behind the More menu. 
Once you save this configuration, it'll be available for users with that profile. If you later assign licenses to new users, make sure that you've created an Epsona configuration for them. Another important place to look when setting up Epsona is settings, manage licenses. This screen tells you some important information about your Epsona package and the users using it. The first screen shows which tools you've installed and their expiration dates. It also tells you how many licenses of each you've purchased. Epsona comes free for 30 days with three licenses for its core tools. This is also an easy place to grab your org ID if Epsona support ever requests it. The second tab shows the primary contact for Epsona. This is the user who will get important emails and invoices regarding Epsona. The third tab shows the users that are assigned Epsona licenses. Here you can control access to certain tools like our charts and dashboards tool and our document and email merge tool. If you don't see a user in this list, it's best to go back to installed packages and confirm that you've assigned them a license. One important detail to make sure that you understand and that all of your users understand is the concept of clearing cache. Epsona is a browser-based tool and it uses a browser cache to store the backend settings that control your users' access to objects and fields. If you make any changes in Salesforce, it's important for you and all of your users to clear cache. Clearing cache is unique to every user, browser, and computer. So you cannot clear cache on behalf of someone else. For any user to clear cache, they can go to the Epsona tab, settings, and clear cache. They can check both boxes and hit proceed. Clearing cache is often the solution to error messages and object and field access. So it's always a good first step whenever anyone encounters an issue. Now let's talk a little bit about sandboxes. The most important thing to remember when installing Epsona in a sandbox is to make sure that all of the users who will be using Epsona are created in the sandbox before you install Epsona. Users who are added after the Epsona installation occurs may not have access to Epsona, and you might be forced to either reinstall Epsona or to refresh the sandbox. As mentioned before, when you go to the App Exchange to install into a sandbox, make sure you log in as your production user, even if you're installing into a sandbox. Once Epsona is installed into a sandbox, the Manage License features are disabled. This is part of Salesforce's license management system. Here I am in a sandbox looking at the installed packages page. You'll see that there's no Manage License link as there is in production. Furthermore, when I go to the Manage License screen in Epsona, I may not see all of the users that are entered into this sandbox, but it's okay. All users added to the sandbox before Epsona is installed will have access to Epsona regardless of their license assignment from production. And one of the greatest things about Epsona is that all Epsona packages are free forever in sandboxes. We want you to have the freedom to test all of the features of Epsona in a sandbox. So we make it available to everyone forever. All right, at this point, if all of your users have the right access, you're good to go. You're welcome to stop the video now, but I'm gonna go a little bit deeper to talk about a few access details that might be relevant if you installed Epsona only for admins and now you need to expand access to other profiles, here's some important details to remember. Any user that needs access to Epsona has to have create, read, edit, and delete access to the Epsona items custom object. This can be done from a permission set or profile. Users also need to have access to the Epsona for Salesforce Visual Force page. And users need to have access to the Epsona tab. For more details about user access, I'll have this link in the description. Thanks for taking the time to learn how to install Epsona. If you need any further support, you're welcome to visit our Contact Us page and fill out our request form to get further support. Thanks, have a great day.